All right, well, as with everything else on my motorhome, uh, function over form, I uh, just installed my Starlink uh, setup on the motorhome. So this is the flagpole buddy 2.0. Um, that's the bottom. And then the top goes all the way over there. So the way this is working inside the motorhome is I've installed the pool uh, noodle uh, mechanisms over here. And then uh, I, I've done them for a different reason, but, um, oh, I'm gonna address this in a minute. Um, I used to store my shovel and rake and everything, but this is just perfect for this kind of stuff. So that's where that sits. And so inside this box, I have the stationary ground mount and i spray painted uh, fragile on it so that i don't forget so basically the black plastic that comes with the dish i was able to take it out of the original box and just put it here in case you're wondering this is commander xl 17 gallons uh model 27 by 18 by 12 and a half so, in any event, so the poles, there's the bottom. Um, I've actually used a shotgun uh, lock, and I'll explain why that is. Um, and then I also have the top portion. What I don't like about flagpole body is just how easily it bends. Um, this is how it came in the box. Uh, there you go. So uh, top of it, this is a 3D printed um, dohiki that goes over here. I'm guessing this hole is for locking mechanism. And then, um, the way they connect to each other just like your typical um pool related accessories and accoutrements um, see how thin this is um, not a particular fan of the fact that this is uh, so thin but uh, that being said And so the way that's supposed to work is uh, you take a dish, slap it on the top. And then the bottom portion slides, boom. So where, uh, and I'm one hand in this obviously, but you get the drill. So, um, you know, you'd be pressing those two buttons to basically lock the one in the other. Kind of, sort of. All right, so the way that works is um, because it has holes for draining, you could actually put cable inside of it and they tell you to enlarge the holes. Um, there's also another hole on the bottom of this. Um, I don't know if you could drill it or not, but... Um, Either way, what I've done is I've taken a shotgun lock and this lock, because this hole goes through, um, this lock actually goes around the stair. So the way that that locks, when it locks, is you physically cannot lift this. And since you can't lift this, you, you can't undo this whole thing, which makes it a little bit more secure. So in terms of cabling, <clears throat> On the, the back of my motorhome, obviously, with the um, uh, mini split and everything like that, I've installed two uh, ammo boxes. Um, so I'll give you an idea of how I've done them. Uh, you could see there's like a metal plate 
bought it at Lowe's. Right there. And um, here's another angle. And so, boom. Right. Now this I haven't found a use for yet. Um, I will. Uh, this isn't meant to store heavy things, obviously. This one over here. Um, about seven or eight ye years ago, I bought this mistakenly for my trailer for a project that never quite um, originated or came to anything. And I had it in my closet ever since, and I thought it would perfect opportunity. So this... Is there we go. This is basically how the cabling goes inside of. Uh, let me see if I could open this with one hand. There you go. That's how that looks. So this is just the typical uh, 30 amp uh, outlet port, and so uh, the end of the cable from Starling. goes into this box and so um, I either could open this and just grab the cable or I could feed the cable back through this hole over there and then the cable will just go all the way over there now the reason why I left it in the box is because I have uh, extra length of cable and uh, that's really important because Let's just say I'm parked under the trees and need to move the dish. Uh, there's enough cable in there to um, move it at least 20, maybe even 30 feet away. So uh, in case you're wondering how I got it to this point, I'm going to show this wire loom. Okay, so the wire loom, I bought at Harbor Freight, one of my favorite stores. And here you could see how I snaked it all the way down and so um, up until the exhaust pipe it's following uh, basically utilizing holes in any framing or anything like that to snake it as far as I could possibly can and uh, once I get to about here ish and it's going to be hard to show, uh, but it basically goes um, along the frame from about the exhaust pipe, which is here. So, technically speaking, like that. And then it goes underneath the stairs, adhere to all of that, um, about here. And then, as you know, I have tons of solar equipment underneath my couch. So, um, also bought a second uh, inverter, uh, pure sign inverter. So once I get inside, I'll show you how that works. And uh, basically that Starling cable goes up one of the holes and then boom. All right, well, just so you have some context, um, this is the second inverter. Uh, this is made by Best Tech, 500 watts. This is pure sign. Apparently, Starlink is very fussy. So the way that's set up is um, wiring from it is wired, obviously, on the correct side. And I have tons of videos about how I've wired everything. Uh, I did bring a flashlight with me. Uh, the battery is dead, so I can show you more than that apologize for that so if you watch my other videos you'll see how I wired all of that but nevertheless wiring that goes from here goes there so that it could still be measured by the Victron um, battery uh, monitor system and so the Starlink cable comes through the hole there you go right and um, haven't quite figured out where the actual dish will be sitting um, Probably right 
there-ish somewhere, I think. Uh, reason being is because I'm still saving this spot over here for another Battleborn battery and that spot for something uh, not quite sure what yet. So, um, but having the modem router in this place over here, either against the wall or up here somewhere, uh, basically still have the cable, uh, still have the, um, you know, the power cable and the Starlink cable and everything like that. So all of that works. Um, I decided for time being not to do anything about my other wiring uh, that goes to my phone boosters and uh, all of the stuff that's underneath the fridge. Um, again, if you watch my previous videos, you know that over here in this bay, I have uh, 4G uh, booster from um, WeBoost as well as uh, wiring that comes out for the 4G router modem. So for the time being, I'm just gonna let it be. Um, you never know, in the future, it's entirely possible that um, I may return to 4G internet as a supplement um we'll just have to cross that bridge when we get to it but that's basically how that will work so the cable um oh by the way in case you're wondering this is the standard 75 foot cable that came with the starlink um this is what the end um looks like on it this is kind of like usb-c uh almost ish but not quite um The other side of this cable actually has a different kind of uh, connector. So it still has this over here. It's just that uh, the cable actually goes forward and you are able to take your um, cable end and basically streamline it. And uh, in case you're wondering in terms of how big of a hole you need to drill, you could get by with drilling a three quarter inch hole to put it through walls. Um, when I was doing my house install, because, you know, I live in a rural part of Florida, we don't have internet over here. So uh, my Starlink, I have the RV plan, um, not residential plan. Uh, so my Starlink was put through uh, about inch and a half hole. Uh, reason being that I wanted to fit as many other cables because I have security cameras and all this other stuff. So, but technically you could squeeze, not this end of the cable, but the other end of this very cable through a three quarter inch hole, uh, one inch preferred though. So um, this is the 75 foot cable. Um, I did order 150 foot cable for my house simply because of where the dish is. Um, and so the 75 foot cable basically fits underneath. So I have about, I don't know, four, maybe five feet or so, probably four up here. And uh, I left it here like that specifically because if I needed to move something somewhere, I have enough of this cable to basically go there. And then cable goes uh, along the frame, along the frame, along the frame, and then pops out over there um, as I've already showed. All right, well, just so you have some context about how this whole thing works. Uh, this is the Starling that I've installed in my home. Um, and so this is the business end of the 150 foot cable. Um, I do have conduit that I plan to put in eventually for time being, I just stuck it inside the garden hose. I've bought the cheapest garden hose imaginable. Just us. Uh, cut off the ends and then put the cable sliced it across the middle entire length so this is three pieces of 150 foot combined um, but so reasoning why I did that is so that when I remove the dish I could actually take the end of the cable and put this in this box um, 
so that it's uh, waterproof. Um, and so the benefit to that is that I just take the dish, put it on the motorhome and go traveling if need be. So um, this over here uh, is how the cable comes out of the dish. That's the actual dish. And then on the end of the dish, there's this button. And so remember the hole that I showed on the uh, 3D printed uh, mount that goes on top of a body pole? So this is what that is. So when you press that, a latch, which is right about here on this metal pole, will go into the hole in there. So um, the actual dish has uh, internal motors in there, which allow the dish to rotate like this and also like that. So through the day, you'll see the dish kind of do its thing. It tracks the sky and tilts the dish and everything like that. And for everybody, it's different because of their overall position. But in my particular case, it's uh, north facing for the most part. I don't think I've ever seen it do anything else. I've seen it go like this, but it's always pointing that way. All right, so uh, here's some basis for comparison. Um, this is my uh, 4G modem. Um, used to have a MoFi 4500. Uh, I used that for a very long time. Then there was a switch in my room with a uh, whole 4G exercise. So this is the company that I've been using for years and years and years. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, obviously. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different vendors out there that give you 4G internet, and this is just one of them. Um, so by contrast, this is Starlink. Uh, nothing lights up on it, uh, which catches a lot of people off guard because they expect things to, you know, because like things light up on every modem, every cable box, every everything here, just nothing happens. So if you were to flip this, on the bottom of this, there's a very small... Uh, uh, LED light that basically lights up. And the purpose of that LED light is to show you that it's connected, but you can't see it while it's in upright position because reasons. I, you know what? I'm just going to let it. <laughs> so apparently this thing is water resistant. So they say that this is rated for the outside. Um, both ends of the uh, connector are water resistant. Uh, the power end of the um, cable is water resistant-ish. I personally would not um, keep this quote-unquote outside uh, in rain. I, it's just me. Uh, Put it under something, right? Uh, just, just my personal take. Uh, but this thing is flying with colors. Uh, nothing but positive things to say. I am migrating away from 4G internet for time being, switching over to Starlink full time.